Hey ladies and gentlemen, Stephen here from Rattle Essence. Welcome back to another video. I hope you're doing well today. And in today's episode, we're gonna be taking a closer look at a fragrance by Paco Rabanne. This is the newest release. It's a flanker to the One Million series. And this one is called One Million Parfum. So make sure to stay tuned. So this here is a brand new release, came out just this year in 2020. This is a collaboration between perfumers Christophe Reynaud and Quentin Biche. Both of them have a superb library of fragrances and you can always go on Fragrantica.com if you're interested in finding out what other fragrances they've done. But I know Delina by Parfum de Marly is like one of Quentin Biche's, you know, amazing fragrances and one that I personally love. But nevertheless, today we're talking about a flanker to the ever so popular One Million by Paco Rabanne. As a matter of fact, you, I'm sure you know at home, this kind of has like a love and hate relationship among uh, fans of Paco Rabanne. And obviously they've done tons of fragrances. You have Ultraviolet and you have um, Invictus even. And believe it or not, this kind of goes in a little bit of that Invictus C territory. I'm going to be talking a little bit more about the smell in much more detail, but as far as it pertains to the 1 million lineup, obviously we have the original, we have the Preve version, 1 million Preve, which happens to be my favorite version, just letting the cat out of the bag early on. We have Lucky, we have the Intense version, right? And there were also several collector's editions like Absolutely Gold, but today, of course, we're going to be focusing our attention on the brand new release, and this contains notes like Solar notes, pine, tuberose, ambergris, manoi oil, cashmeron, leather. So it seems to be a totally different beast from the original Paco Rabanne. So I think it goes without saying that I was excited to smell this one just to see how much different it could be from the original Paco Rabanne. But before we talk about the smell, let's go ahead and take a closer look at the presentation. So the presentation for this one is also kind of similar to the original, uh, with the exception of this motif here on the front, kind of looks like a sun, but the logo and stuff like that is pretty much the same. The serial number is punched into the bottom of the box if you want to authenticate your purchase. And the back of the box just has the ingredients on it. Now the bottle for this one, I do think it looks really, really nice. I know a lot of people are inclined to say that it looks kitschy, but I actually really enjoy the presentation and same motif from the box. And the serial number for this one is printed in black ink, I think, towards the bottom of the bottle here. It's kind of hard to read. And it should also be noted that this fragrance does have a built-in atomizer, so you have to get a good grip on the bottle, but the distribution on the atomizer is pretty good. Let's continue with the smell. So the first thing that I could say is that the opening of the smell is definitely sweet. And so if you are familiar with the original Paco Rabanne, you know that it's a very sweet fragrance. And I think that that's kind of what created this love-hate relationship among uh, many perfume aficionados out there. And I think many fans of it love the fact that it's this club banger, as they would call it. You know, it's a type of fragrance that you can wear to the club. It's very sweet, it's attention getting, and it comes across smelling rather youthful. And I think it's going to appeal to a younger clientele. And you know, it goes without saying that Paco Rabanne was infinitely successful in creating something that resonated with that demographic. Now, the sweetness in this fragrance is very different from the sweetness in One Million, or the original One Million, I should say. And so for something packaged in the same presentation and also released as a flanker of One Million, um, I'm kind of surprised that there's so much of a deviation between the original and this one. Now, obviously, when you think of fragrances like One Million, I think it's called Intense, right? One Million Intense. I've even reviewed it on my channel. That is actually kind of close to the original One Million. I know it also includes a note of rose, which really sort of takes it in a different direction. One Million Preve is incense -y, it's deep, it's rich, it's complex, it's fantastic. And I love One Million Preve. And One Million Lucky takes it in a much lighter direction, but you can also see a little bit of that DNA of One Million in the background. 
This one I feel like is so different from the original One Million. There is no longer this bubblegum juicy fruit note in the opening that many people so often uh, equate to the smell of the original One Million. This one opens up smelling closer to Invictus Aqua and obviously it's the same company so you might be thinking okay well there might be a little bit of an overlap there especially given the success of Invictus Aqua and the Invictus franchise so maybe they wanted to borrow an element from that and you know extrapolate it into this but honestly if there's a fragrance out there that this one smells closer to I would actually be more convinced if this were a flanker of Atsaro Wanted. And every time I smell it, it kind of reminds me of Atsaro Wanted by Night. Now, I'll be honest with you, I haven't done a side-by-side. -side. I'm really just going off of the memory, what's stored in my memory bank as far as olfactory memories are concerned. And as soon as I smelled it, I was like, oh yeah, this is definitely in the wheelhouse of like a Wanted by Night by Atsaro. Um, which also further confused me because when you take a look at the note breakdown for that fragrance, it has a really different note breakdown from what you're gonna get from this fragrance. Uh, this fragrance, it opens up with, you know, um, as far as the note breakdown is concerned, a lot of people say tuberose, right? Tuberose is, you know, one of the most concentrated notes according to user votes online. And I'll be honest, there's nothing about this fragrance that smells floral to me. Maybe it's my inexperienced nose, but you know, I definitely pick up on a little bit of that solar vibe and the aquatic notes and the ambergris, I guess, slash ambroxan that's going on in here in the cashmere on. I can see that making its way and how it plays off in this composition. But as far as maybe like the floral nuances or this note of pine is concerned, I'm not really picking up on that. I'm really more so picking up on a very sweet fragrance that has a heavy and healthy dose of tonka bean and vanilla. There's something in the opening that also comes across smelling a little bit spicy, maybe an ever so slight touch of cinnamon. And I'm sure there's like cinnamic alcohol or cinnamonol or something in this fragrance that sort of gives off that vibe. Um, but really it's the type of, you know, like I said, if somebody took this fragrance, put it under my nose and said, what franchise do you think this is a flanker of? I would say Atsaro Wanted because it really puts me in that mindset of like a wanted by night uh, sort of a fragrance. But all in all, I think that for a fragrance with the Parfum designation, you know, I suppose when thinking about all of the fragrances in the 1 million lineup, I think the names and the labels could have been slapped on any formula and it would still make sense. Like if the 1 million, if the juice that went inside the 1 million intense bottle were placed inside this bottle, I think it would be convincing, right? Because it does seem like a stronger version of 1 million. And it, it almost has gotten to this point where a lot of the names like By Night or Intense or Parfum, because Parfum is, you know, widely regarded to be a more intense or a stronger version of an original rendition, a lot of these names are almost becoming interchangeable, you know? And so for that reason, I think that might create a little bit of consumer confusion, unless of course they're going off of the success of other fragrances also with the Parfum designation, like uh, Dior Sauvage, Parfum, Bleu de Chanel, Parfum. But at least in the case of those two fragrances, they do smell like the original. You know, Bleu de Chanel Parfum does smell like Bleu de Chanel Eau de Toilette to a certain extent. Dior Sauvage Parfum, you can definitely smell the Dior Sauvage Eau de Toilette DNA in there. This one is just a totally different scent altogether. And so, you know, you might still like it. I think as far as the scent is concerned, and I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to be too heavy handed and I'm not trying to, you know, offer too much of a criticism, despite the fact that it doesn't align with the naming or anything like that. You know, as far as the smell is concerned, I think this is the type of smell that is going to attract a younger demographic. I think this is also the type of smell that is going to get a lot of positive attention from women if that is your goal and perhaps even other men if that is your goal you know i think this is just a very appealing and very approachable uh, sort of a fragrance just be cautioned as a consumer if you're buying this because you want something that is a slight iteration of the original one million you are going to get a fragrance whilst in the same genre 
uh, you're still gonna get a fragrance that smells quite different from the original One Million, but that's pretty much what I get from the smell. <laughs> Let's finish things up with my overall assessment. Now, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, I don't think it's ultra unique in the sense that I think a lot of companies are sort of following this Invictus Aqua trend where they're trying to add this marine or oceanic thing with like a super sweet background. And we have like YSLY and we have this fragrance and I guess to a certain extent Versace Eros, but even though, you know, I do find that fragrance to be rather unique. I know it utilizes the note of tonka bean, but this fragrance I would actually compare to like Atsado Wanted or Atsado Wanted by Night. And so I don't think it's totally unique, but the overall smell, especially for the demographic that they're targeting, it's gonna do very well. I know it's gonna do very well. And I would even put money on it that two, three, four years down the line, you walk into a Macy's post COVID, uh, it's still gonna be on the shelf because I just see this one resonating with people. And uh, if you like, one million and several of the other flankers, one million lucky as well, chances are you're gonna enjoy this flanker too. In terms of the longevity, I got about seven to eight hours on my skin. So for a parfum concentration uh, or a parfum designation, I should say, I think this one performs in that territory, in that average territory where it's supposed to perform. In terms of the projection on this one, did really well for about two hours, didn't become a skin scent until about that five to five and a half hour mark. But even then it didn't become a skin scent really. It just radi radiated within an elbow's length. And so it became a skin scent at like the seven hour mark. That's when you really have to dig your nose into your hand to be able to smell this one. In terms of the versatility, I think it gives off a youthful appeal. So perhaps if you're in your 40s or 50s, you probably want to go with something that's a bit more refined, something a bit more elegant or gentlemanly. Uh, this one definitely has this sort of young bad boy, I'm going clubbing sort of a vibe to it. And I think that that's what they're aiming for, especially with this aesthetic and this presentation. And in terms of seasons, I think this one would probably do better in the colder weather, just because of a lot of the sweeter ingredients that are in here. I know the inclusion of ingredients like solar notes and um, salt and ambergris, you're like, oh, I could probably pull this off in the summer, right? It's gonna be that fresh sort of oceanic type of a fragrance. Not really. Um, I don't think there are enough aquatic elements in here to make it an ideal summer staple in one's collection. But again, you know, these are just recommendations. Go out there, smell it for yourself. If you like it, just wear it. At the end of the day, I say, as long as you're in a climate controlled environment, you can pretty much wear whatever you want. Uh, and then lastly, the presentation this sort of sun looking logo here on the front, I actually think is pretty cool. And I like Paco Rabanne for the fact that they're able to release fragrances that have um, very recognizable presentations, whether we're talking about Ultraviolet, Ultra Red, Invictus, this franchise here. I just think it's even uh, Olympia. I just think it's really, really cool. I like the presentations. I know some might find them kitschy, but my final verdict on this fragrance is it's a nice fragrance. Um, I don't think it's one that had I not been a collector, you know, I wouldn't have purchased. Uh, I don't need this in my collection. Uh, I have Atado Wanted by Night, which I think sort of satisfies this genre pretty well. Um, I think also a lot of consumers, when they smell this, they might be off put by the fact that it doesn't smell all that similar to the original One Million. But honestly, if you're a 20 something year old, you're looking for a sweet fragrance that is not Versace Eros or YSLY and you you know, you just, you're into that partying, clubbing vibe slash atmosphere, and you're looking for something that is super appropriate for that occasion. I think this one is a solid fragrance for you. So again, you know, these are just recommendations. Scent is subjective. You know, we all sort of owe it to ourselves to go out there, try fragrances for ourselves, see what we like, see what resonates with us. Cause at the end of the day, it's your nose that should be the uh, the final judge. And so thank you so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. If you're new to this channel and you took something of value from this video, I would really appreciate it if you could support this channel by subscribing to it. All you gotta do is click that red subscribe button in the corner and please do consider enabling notifications by clicking on that notification bell next to the subscribe button. This way, whenever I do upload future fragrance related content, it'll get delivered straight to your feed. You never need to worry about missing any of my future uploads. And of course that includes fragrance reviews just like this, but also top 10 videos, giveaways, unboxings, special guests, interviews, and a lot more. Thanks again for watching. I love you all. We'll see you next time. Bye.